such a philippa well yes let's dig a little bit deeper to see how some of uh, the uk's biggest brands could be affected burberry this week the fashion empire it reported a three percent fall in year-on-year -year sales and is looking to really shake things up with a new CEO but how well will the label known for its classic tartan and trench coats navigate a stormy economic future well joining me here in the studio is Imran Ahmed founder and editor of the business of fashion Imran really good to talk to you so we had these disappointing sales for Burberry we are entering uncharted economic waters how well do you think this I iconic fashion brand is suited to weather the storm. Well, this is one of many storms that companies like Burberry are facing. I mean, the results that were reported this week are oft obviously not a direct result of the or re reflection of the Brexit uh, vote, um, but rather a reflection of, of wider countervailing forces in the industry that have made uh, it a challenging operating environment for not just Burberry, but luxury brands the world mm -hmm. over. And I think uh, in the last six to 12 months, Burberry has been setting out a, um, a strategy to adapt, to change. And I think that's probably the most critical thing for any business right now. You know, we're operating in an environment which um, is changing rapidly, um, mm. where, you know, currency changes, political changes, um, you know, terrorism, all of these things are impacting the the ability and interest for consumers to consume and where they consume. So being able to adapt to these changes is really important. And I think some of the strategic changes that Burberry announced this week are showing that they are thinking ahead and trying to change with the times. Well, let's talk about those because you mentioned the challenges facing the brand, the weakening pound, difficult. Any retailer that relies on imports, this slowdown that we've seen among many of its uh, key Asian customers, particularly I'm thinking about China and Hong Kong, that's been affecting their bottom line as well. But they do have a new CEO at the helm. We've been waiting for a long time for this announcement. Marco Gabetti, what sort of man is he? So Marco's a luxury veteran. Um, I think, uh, you know, he comes from uh, a background at LVMH where he was the CEO of Givenchy and worked very closely with their creative director, Ricardo Tichy. Uh, he then moved up to, to work with uh, Phoebe Philo, the creative director of Celine. Uh, he has an ability to connect very well with top creative people and partner with them to to lead and reposition businesses. This is a slightly new challenge for, for Marco because um, he's obviously entering a business which is much larger than Givenchy or Celine and is not a business that is kind of being repositioned or, or, or growing rapidly, but really about taking a business that's taken a, a much stronger uh, digital positioning and working with them on brand. Well, on that, how strong is he on digital and, uh, and social media, et cetera, and really accessing those, those younger customers? Yeah, I mean, Marco, uh, you know, at Celine has been seen or known in the, in the fashion industry as perhaps one of the least digitally interested, yeah. if not digitally savvy brands. But I think the pairing between Christopher Bailey, who has shown great innovation in digital, with Marco, who has a really strong understanding of brand and retail, I think that is potentially a very good pairing. Well, I mean, it remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. um, but the ability, I think, for a, a creative director and a chief executive to partner together and drive a business, that's, that's really the test here. Because, of course, Mr. Bailey will now become president, remains chief creative officer. Very briefly, shareholders, they seem to be quite unhappy with Mr. Bailey's performance of late so they will perhaps one presumes welcome this change at the top yeah I think there was a lot of question right around the time when uh, Christopher Bailey was promoted from not just being uh, chief creative officer to be also being chief executive officer there were a lot of questions in the city and, and in the financial markets about the ability of one person to manage that mm -hmm. workload creative directors in luxury businesses are already very busy people who oversee not just the design of the clothing but the creative direction of the stores of the ad campaigns of all the content that a brand creates and to add on top of that all of the responsibilities of a CEO it's a it's a formidable task and yeah. you know even if you're superhuman I think it's very very <laughs> difficult to manage the workload of both CEO and creative chief creative officer so I think the city has responded mm -hmm. favorably to this appointment Burberry shares were up after the announcement because simply splitting the workload and, ins and ensuring that there are dedicated people focusing on both sides of the business is very important. What's also going to be interesting going forward is to see how the fashion industry is affected by some of these pledges from Theresa May to, to create a new fairer a corporate uh, boardroom environment, you know, distancing or, or, or shortening this gap between executive pay and worker pay. We'll have to see if that trickles down into an industry 
such as fashion. Imran, really good to talk to you. Imran Ahmed there from the business of fashion.